I thought I would take this time to tell you a little bit about myself, the person behind the author, so to speak. Most of you who have seen my previous videos know that I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. But I thought I would tell you exactly where I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up on 13th Street between 4th and 5th Avenue. I lived in an apartment building that was directly across the street from Holy Family Catholic Church and right next to the church was the convent. Now the convent that was directly across the street housed the sisters that taught me at the parochial school I went to, Holy Family School. So it was a little hard to misbehave when you have your church and the convent directly across the street. In the summertime, me and some of my friends from the apartment building would go up into the top of the roof and we'd try to catch a glimpse of the nuns because as people in Brooklyn call it, Tar Beach, sometimes people would go up on their roofs to, sun, to get a suntan. And the reason they called it Tar Beach is because the top of the roofs have rolled up, rolled out tar paper. And it definitely gets sticky though when it's really hot. But anyway, sometimes we'd go up and catch a glimpse of the Dominican nuns. Now, for any of you that know anything about Dominican nuns in the past, they were covered from head to toe in a habit. And they had some kind of white thing. I don't even know what it was. Some white thing across their forehead. So the only part of their face that showed was right here. So all you saw all day was this part of their face and their hands. That's it. You saw nothing else. So you can imagine as a young kid the excitement to be able to look over across the street to the roof of where the nuns were laying out to get a tan in their one-piece black bathing suits. It's like, oh my gosh, they had legs and arms. They had feet. They had hair. Some had short hair. Some had long hair. It was kind of fascinating from that age group and that time that I grew up. Because the nuns lived across the street and because the church was right there, there was often priests in the neighborhood, of course. Now, one day I had this bright idea to get a roller skate. Now, the roller skates were different back then. You just attached them to your shoe and had a little key to make it tight to your shoe. Well, I had this bright idea to get the biggest textbook I could find in my house and put it on top of the skateboard. And then balancing my torso, I pushed myself down the street. And then I sort of flew. It was kind of like a pre-skateboard. Well, as I was flying down the street on this uh, self-made skateboard, a priest was driving, like right in my direction. So needless to say, I got into trouble about that because you could not misbehave on your street if you have a convent and your church is right there. Now, living across the street from a church and seeing it every day, it just becomes part of the environment. It's really nothing special. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. When I grew up, my mother told me the church is where God lives. So when you want to talk to God, you go to the church because that's his house. So I just thought of the church as God's house. It was just a house. So if I was outside playing with my friends and my mittens got wet because of the snow, I would go to the rec I would go into the vestibule, put, take off my gloves or mittens and put them on the heater, the little radiator there, and leave them there to dry and go sit in the back pew of the church. And if, if I was with my friends, we would sit and talk. And if I was by myself, I would just sit and talk to God. So a church came, became a very comfortable place for me because to me, it was just a house. And if God's mittens got wet, I knew I'd let him in my apartment. So as a child, that's kind of how I felt about it. Now, when I was thinking of what to say today, because I, I've already talked about the four of my books. I gave a little synopsis about them. And when I decided I wanted to tell you a little about myself, how I grew up, I realized that I never realized just how much living across the street from a church impacted me. Because in every single one of my books, not intentionally, I realized today 
did I mention a Catholic church in my first book, What the Heart Can Hold? Marissa, the female protagonist, she gives Hans, her boyfriend, a tour of her favorite spots of New York City. And one of them is a Catholic church. In my second book, Until One Day, we have Sydney, the lawyer whose husband cheated on her. It's sad, we don't want to get into that part. But anyway, she goes into a church and she lights a candle. My third book, Sex or Fun. Now, this has a lot of sex in it. How could you get? How could you possibly get a, a church in here, right? Well, if you see, the guy she meets is from Pottsville, Pennsylvania. So what I did is, when the girl is taking a walk through the town that she's not familiar with, she passes a Catholic church. And what did she do? She does what every good Catholic girl will do. She goes in and lights a candle. Then, my last book, the most recent one, not last, because I'm still writing. The, the most recent one that's released, this book also has a lot of sex in it. And this book mentions how the girl feels when she's sitting on a pew in a church during a wedding. So whether it's like this book only has, I think it's maybe a sentence or two. And, you know, maybe for this book it's a paragraph. That's all. You know, and in the other books also, just short little snippets. It's nothing tremendous. It's just that I realized, I never realized how much living across the street from a church affected me, that it's just so so much part of who I am that it's in every one of my books, even the ones that are nothing but sex. What can I tell you? Well, anyway, so that's enough about me for today. So in closing, let me say this. Here's wishing that every woman out there finds the man of her dreams so she can get the love, respect, loyalty, and sex that we as women all deserve.